Right, I've bought a new GTN3 insert part offset for my lathe, um, thinking it was going to be very good. The tool holder is perfect, there's nothing wrong with that, but the blade is actually useless. Um, this is the GTN3 type, um, and they also do it in GTN2, and it's the ones that are 19mm. If you buy them in the 26mm or the 32mm, I would reckon that they would be perfectly alright. The 19mm ones, um, like this one here, the actual cutout for the insert is too close to the lower side of the tool. It's a bad design, therefore making this section here too weak. And on first use, um, the actual insert pushed back and bent the lower side of this tool down, making it inoperable. Now, you can get these in GTN2 as well with a 2mm insert, and I dare say they're exactly the same. But in this video, I'm going to show you how you can actually um, strengthen this tool to make it into a super strong tool if you actually buy this type. So on this 19mm um, blade I'll just show you a close-up um, before I show you the modification. Um, you can see this uh, section here, this cutout, and on the lower side the thickness there is only about 3.5 to 4mm wide and therefore that's not strong enough to actually um, stop this section here from bending. As soon as there's pressure applied to this insert, it pushes it into the actual cutout and this lower half, like I say, bends down. So it's a very quick and easy modification. Just use the um, tool provided to take out the insert. Clean up the lower half and the sides nice and shiny on the buffing wheel and then clean with some acetone. Use a block, I used a block of aluminium. Um, put the actual tool on there nice and flat. And I got a, a section of HSS which is exactly the same width as the um, blade. And I actually put that on the lower half that's all cleaned up nice and clean, ready to braise. It goes on the lower half of the tool, flush with the end face, and a length which will actually um, go past that um, cutout. And then I heat it up red, um, run some braise in one side, then turn it over and do the same on the other side. When it's cooled down, I put it on the um, belt sander and take off any uh, real high spots um, to actually make it the same um, thickness again. Don't take too much off, um, just uh, enough so that it's thinner than the actual um, part off tip, uh, the same as the blade. And um, I found um, using this tool like this has actually saved it from the scrap bin and made it absolutely into a super strong tool. Um, when I put it in my Myford ML7, I used the rear tool post uh, with the tool and the actual tool is set upside down. So it actually go into the tool holder like this here. Not only has the HSS steel piece um, covered that um, weak section, but this back here pushes up against the tool holder and actually stops the um, tool from moving as well. So it's making it absolutely solid um, in use. And it would do the same if you used it up the normal way um, on the lower half. So this upgrade, like I say, saved the tool from the scrap bin and made it into a super strong tool and uh, I would still actually buy the actual 19mm ones to actually do this upgrade and use them as such. 
So now I'm going to show this tool in operation on the Myford ML7, cutting a 20 millimeter long billet from this two inch um, diameter aluminium. And you'll know when buying a um, bar like this um, that it works out cheaper if you buy um, longer length. Um, you want to part off a section like this and this is a method I use on both my lathes to actually safely part off a section like this um, and save having to actually saw it. Right, so this is the two inch diameter aluminium bar that I'm going to part off on the Myford ML7 and I'm going to part this um, short piece off here. I've got the part off very close to the jaws the machine is set in the fastest back gear which is about 150 rpm or thereabouts. I've taken off the tail stock and I've got a drip feed of paraffin um, for lubrication and coolant. Um, I made this tool up today, it's an old Moore and Wright V block and I drilled and tapped it through um, for 8mm. I put an 8mm studding uh, through that with a lock nut on the underside here so it's actually locked into the block. Um, I've got this PTFE um, piece of bar um, on there so it's a free movement on that one. Um, that one's just over 2 inches in diameter. And then I've got a disc of um, brass which goes on the underside of the ways and a lock nut at the bottom. And I've used these materials here so it doesn't damage or mark the ways in any way. And this one then slides down the centre of the ways. And I position that about halfway up the bar. Um, pull it up and adjust the nut so it's just touching the um, underside of the um, brass. And then lock the top nut down. And this will be a, a steady and a bit of a support for this bar. And I forgot to mention I've um, buffed off the sharp edges of the actual V block on the top and on the corners so it do doesn't dig in. And when it's set it's only just touching the um, diameter. Um, you have to be careful that you don't um, screw it up too tight and move the bar. And I've um, oiled up the back gears and um, you'll find that it's still quite noisy um, but that's normal for these Myford ML7s.
far as I can go. But then I can just break the bar off that small piece. And you can see there that that tool stood up to that perfectly, um, cut lovely, and I can assure you if it didn't have that um, strengthening piece in there, um, that would have actually bent. And like I say, I've used it successfully on stainless steel as well. Um, you can only um, raise up one end at a time, um, obviously to get it in the tool holder, um, but in future if this one wears out or breaks, um, obviously you can turn it round and braise a section on the other end. I could actually just debraise this piece and put it on the other end. And this um, tool holder is really well suited to the Myford ML7 and the Chinese mini lathe because it has a 10mm square shank. Um, I also found out that it can actually take um, these HSS tools, uh, 3 quarter inch, um, and you can get these uh, very inexpensive on eBay. But I really like the actual insert tooling like this best of all. The inserts are relatively inexpensive to buy. Um, I've seen them almost as inexpensive being sold directly in Britain now on eBay as um, when you buy them directly from China. So I think this is a great tool to have. And like I say, I actually prefer the insert tooling um, to any other.